Hello everyone, welcome to Manufacture Series Test Season 2 on uh, Gran Turismo 7. We're here for round 2, unfortunately missed round 1, can't really do all the races because they're constantly changing days of when they happen as well as time slots. But regardless, round 2 around Kyoto Driving Park Yamagiva, beautiful circuit, personally really like it, maybe not so fast around it, but just like the layout, very fun circuit. Um, for this season, I decided to go with Chevrolet as my manufacturer. Don't ask me why, don't really know. Uh, just kind of like, I, I like how the car looks. It seems like most people are gonna go with Mazda or BMW, mostly Mazda because of just how overpowered this car is, at least in Group 4. And it seems like everything that's four-wheel drive is quite overpowered in Group 4s at the moment. So yeah, decided to go with something less popular, uh, so to speak. Not the fastest car, but we'll see what we can do with it. Now, going into round one, I personally didn't expect much from this race because given that it's a test season, there isn't, there isn't much strategy involved, to be honest, because in this race, tire, tire wear rate is set to one and fuel consumption rate is set to one as well. So basically, it turns into a very, very long daily race B, so to speak, because the race is going to be 15 laps without any strategy involved whatsoever, because your tires are barely going to wear out. Yeah, the car's going to lose fuel, but it don't, it's only going to make you faster. So I didn't really expect much from this race. I thought that I will treat it as a, a test race, to be honest, uh, for, for me driving the Corvette, but... Boy, was I wrong. Uh, we're gonna get to that later in the video, so just please stay until the end. But I was surprised by how not boring it actually was. I I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, but yeah, here going to qualifying for race one, I, I didn't have much practice for this race, which is quite unusual for me. I usually try to get as much practice in as possible. Um, but here I only had around 10 laps. Uh, of driving this car around this track in in the in the time trial mode before the race so i i wasn't quite on it the most difficult part for me was the chicane in the middle of the lap i just couldn't carry as much speed through this section of the track as everybody else but to be honest it was kind of expected given that i had no practice as i said and i was mainly treating this race as a warm-up for the next time slot uh, after this one so at the end of qualifying p9 one second of the leader which isn't that great, but still, P9 in the top 10, it's, it's, it's a decent result for the first qualifying. Going into the race, we've got Atenza on pole, which was expected. And immediately off the start, I somehow get a huge jump on uh, this Atenza right ahead of us. So maybe going into turn one, if we have enough overspeed, uh, we're going to look for an overtake. But he does break quite late for this corner, so... I can nip down the inside, but the thing about this circuit is that you can hang around the outside on these long corners quite successfully, and he does exactly that, keeping his position until a few laps later he makes the same mistake, allows me to go down the inside. I get a better run this time, but he's still there, so I can't fully move over to the right, to the racing line, so I have to stay on the inside get the defensive line and going into the chicane we move up a position so that would be p8 at the moment but unbeknown to me at the time he gets a huge run on me out of the corner as i said i just have no idea how to take the chicane and goes immediately back past me try to go around the outside doesn't really work gives me a bit of a touch so we slot back in into p9 and nothing really happened until that point where McLaren spun on the exit of the uh, chicane. We move up into P8 and a few corners later, Bob makes a mistake going wide in the penultimate corner, which gives us the run. Gonna go around the outside, have the overspeed and slot in nicely into what was P7 at the moment. And after that, nothing really happened for a few laps. Up until lap 9, where going into this penultimate corner, I make quite a substantial mistake bouncing on the curb, which allows the Audi TT right behind me to get a good run on me. He's gonna go down the inside. I don't defend it. Uh, he's gonna have a nice 
clean line on the inside. I tried to get the switch back on him, but he hugs the inside very nicely. But on this tray, I do know that the Corvette is quite fast in the tray line, even against uh, Audi TT. So we will have quite a good run on him, going fully side by side into turn one. But an outside line doesn't really work if you go too wide because it's dirty. Gives me a bit of a touch and slots into P7. But going up the hill, again, I tried to use the power of the Corvette to get a slingshot on him. But the thing is, I'm a bit too close, so I can't go full speed. Can I get a proper slingshot past him? And then going to the downhill left-hander. Well, when I pull out, I give him a slight tap on the rear, which ruins my momentum. So having to settle for P8 for now. I do manage to stay with him. So a few laps later going up the hill again this time not so close to him so i can get an overspeed and potentially try to overtake him i'm gonna look down the inside to make a move but what i don't expect is that the mclaren behind me who spun earlier she's gonna send it on both of us doors out of the way and move up into p7 so we gain one position but immediately lose another one we do manage to clear the Audi TT right behind us. He's not going to attack us into that chicane. But as I said, I'm just not fast enough to the chicane against other people. So TT gets a better run on me. He's not fully alongside yet. So I decide not to defend into the hairpin. But as we come into the braking zone, if we look at the radar and also familiar picture of someone being punted in the braking zone and that pretty much seals the deal for P8. They're gonna fight each other in the end, gonna cross the line and P8 gaining one position from our starting position, which isn't too bad. P8 is a good result given that it's my first race in this car with barely any practice. But that's the first race. I'm convinced I can do better, so we go again. This time around, I'm hoping to qualify her up and given that I had this good, good of a race without much practice, I'm expecting a much better result in the next slot. So this time around, a very interesting picture. There are no attenders. There are quite a few oval drive cars which are much faster at this point of the game. So moving into qualifying, I did set my best lap overall around this track in this car, a 42.4 dead, which put us again P8 on the grid, but this time only half a second behind the leader. So the, the, the overall grid is much much closer than in the previous race so here we are for the start of race number two and immediately after the start absolutely nothing has happened for the first four laps so we jump straight into lap five going up the hill through the s section behind the porsche we're going to use the power of the corvette and the slightly better run out of turn one to potentially look for an overtake here going to go down the inside into the downhill left hander but as I said before, it is possible to go around the outside on this track. And Porsche is a much better cornering car than the Corvette. So he does exactly that. Still going to have the inside line for the chicane though. So we're going to have enough speed to hold on there. On the braking, nice and late. Hitting the apex and moving up into P7. But not only he gets a good run on me. The Jaguar behind us also gets a good run on the Porsche. So he's going to overtake him. I'm going to defend the inside into this hairpin. He is still there, but the outside line isn't really going to work into this corner. So we slot in into P7 for now. But he's still there. He's still quite close, and he is a very fast driver. So going into the penultimate corner, he's going to get a slightly better run than me. Potentially going to look for the inside line, so I defend it. He's going to try and go around the outside. Maybe try to get the switch back, but I do manage to hug the inside line quite well. He's still there on the right side, but hopefully uh, the Corvette is going to have enough power to outdrag the Jaguar, but it doesn't look like it. So uh, we're going to have to defend the turn one, which I absolutely do not manage to do. So I overshoot the corner. He switches it back on me and slots into P7 for now. He is going to pull away quite a bit uh, in the lap until this point where Subaru up ahead of us goes into the wall. In, in solidarity, Jaguar does as well. Loses all of his momentum. So we're going to go 
flying past. Uh, he's gonna defend the inside, going into the outside. He has other plants though, so he breaks late, doors me, but then immediately gets hit from the behind himself and goes for a very nice spin. So we regain that position and gain another extra position out of the Subaru spinning. But here we have once again someone else behind me trying to overtake me. Uh, this is the Porsche again that we just overtook. He's still there. It's very close. And it seems like at this point quite a big train of cars is starting to form behind me. I do have straight line speed to stay ahead of at least Porsches, but in the corners, this Corvette or me, uh, we just don't have enough. Because here in, in turn one, you can see him clearly closing in on me massively. So all my adv advantage is just in the straight line speed. So we survive for now, we stay P6. And at this point, um, I'm thinking that there's, there's no way I'm going to be able to defend. There's absolutely no way. At some point, they're all gonna fly past me. Just look at the amount of cars behind me trying to take the sixth position away from me. But I'm starting to think that maybe, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can defend. There's six, seven and a half laps left. And I'm, I, might, I might be able to do it. That's what I'm thinking. So going into the final section of the track, once again, we're probably gonna be slow to this penultimate corner. Porsche is going to get a better run. I'm going to go defensive just to make sure that he doesn't send it down the inside. He tries to go around the outside. Immediately has a much better line through there. But on the exit, just managed to get a very good exit, very good run. And on a straight line, we're going to be faster than the Porsche. So we're going to secure this position for now. A few laps later, going up the hill, I'm going to make a mistake that I have no idea how it didn't cost me the whole race. So into this final right-hander. I'm going to get on the curb. It's going to launch me into the air. I somehow catch this light, but it does allow the Porsche to go around the outside. He is going to hang it there and still be side by side with me on the exit of the corner. So a similar overtake that we've done a few laps before, but this time I'm actually defending. He's going to go around the outside into the chicane and he's going to have a beautiful line through there. At this point, I'm sure he's got me. He's going to go around the outside for some reason, he decides to cut the grass, goes for his half spin, and goes off the track completely. But it doesn't mean that I can't relax, because immediately there's another car behind me. Mercedes trying to go for it. He doesn't go for the overtake into the hairpin, because he's very close. And Mercedes is a whole nother story, because it is the car that's actually fast in the straight line. Now on lap 10, going up the hill, there's someone spinning. It's a McLaren that was a very fast guy spinning and we gain another position so it's p5 for now and with each mistake from other driver ahead of us it means that the defensive driving that i'm doing is more and more important because we are fighting for high and higher positions again mercedes gets a good run on me i'm gonna have to go defensive into the chicane but again i'm trying not to go too defensive given how slow i am through the corners because i don't want to compromise myself too much and get an awful exit He's still right there behind me. So I'm going to go for the semi-defensive line into the hairpin again. But in this corner, an outside line doesn't, doesn't really work. So you, you can defend quite easily there. So going into the final part of the circuit again. This corner, I, I keep making mistakes there. And here again, I don't really make a mistake, but he's way faster than me through this part of the track he's gonna go down the inside this time he's gonna switch it back but i somehow managed to get a good exit out of it get a good exit i'm gonna slightly out drag him on the exit and it's gonna allow me to tuck back ahead of him and have enough straight line speed to not have to defend into turn one now a lap later on lap 11 it, it the exactly same place Merck is going to get a better run again. He's not as close this time, so uh, when I defend the inside, he tries to go around the outside, but not fully alongside. Doesn't get a good run, so I managed to keep that position. Again, going to power out on the corner, have a much better straight line speed. Next lap, same place, same story. I'm going to get a mediocre run out of the penultimate corner. He's much closer to me this time. 
He's gonna go around the outside once again. Like, this time around, he's gonna be way closer to actually overtaking me. And on the exit of the corner, I do get a bit of a slide going. I tried to catch the car, but unfortunately, I just push him off the track. He's gonna lose a couple of positions. But here, Miganda was miles ahead of us. Makes a mistake, spins. So we're gonna get another position for free. Moving up into P4 this time around. And at this point, so much is happening that I can't really keep up with it. All I'm trying to do is to defend. Every single corner I'm trying to defend. I'm not fast of the corners whatsoever, me or the car. So all I'm hoping for is to defend through the corners and then have enough straight line speed to hang, just hang on for my position on a straight line. At the same time, right behind me, Porsche is looking for an overtake on the Megane. He's gonna go down the inside into the left hander. A little bit of wheel touching there, but he does manage to squeeze past him again and he's also going to get a great run on me because I do go on to the grass on the edge of the corner so that means I'm gonna have to go defensive for the chicane and at this point I'm certain he's gonna go past me but actually he gets launched himself by the Megan they go very slow through the chicane which allows the Mercedes to get a good run on both of them I'm gonna switch to his perspective now because he's gonna go around the outside of the Porsche into the hairpin but actually Megan Breaks a little bit too late, goes wide, Mercedes goes wide as well. On the exit, they're gonna go three wide, which is never going to work. So Megan gets the short stick and goes onto the grass. Now starting the penultimate lap of the race, lap 14, the gap behind me is just over a second, which is more than enough at this point. Starting the final lap, the gap is still pretty much the same. So I do know that I just need to keep it clean, not make any mistakes, and I should be able to bring this P4 home. But what I don't know is that the Mercedes behind me is going to go on an absolute rampage on this final lap. So going up the hill, it's going to be behind the Porsche. It's going to go for a move into the downhill left-hander. Well, I call this a move. He just barges him out of the way. Porsche goes wide. Mercedes moves up into P5. He's, he's right behind me. He's got great pace, so he's going to be closing in on me massively. Going into this chicane for the final time in this race, I'm going to be very slow, very conservative, maybe even too conservative, because the Mercedes behind, he keeps gaining. Gap is coming down rapidly. He's still not going to be close enough into this happen, but I know he's closing in. So I'm starting to get a little bit nervous because I do need to go fast, but I, I'm still trying not to make any mistakes and bring it home. Going out of this hairpin, he's very close. The gap is just around six tenths at this point. So I do know that I need to nail the final two corners. And guess what I don't do? That. Going into the penultimate corner, I get too much in the curve. I get the slide going. He's going to gain massively on me. But I know he's not close enough to send it down the inside. So I defend it. He still goes for it. Hits me on the rear panel. I, I somehow save it. Going out of the corner, he's going to push me onto the grass. And what happens next needs no explanation. And just like that, after race-long battles with so many cars, such a hard-fought P4, a position that I thought was certainly mine, turns into a very disappointing P10. Even while editing this video, it is still very, very heartbreaking to look at it, because it was probably one of my best drives ever on Gran Turismo Sport 7, any game for that matter. I've never been good at defending and to do it for such a long time against people who are much faster than you in a car that's not that fast around this track, it would have been such a great achievement for me to actually get that P4. But in the end, I did kind of brought it upon myself, so I did push the Mercedes off the track so you can say that in that sense it was deserved I did make a mistake on the on the penultimate corner I was quite slow in the final lap and regardless of whose fault it is mine someone else's I did enjoy this race it was very fun it was heartbreaking in the end but it's motor racing we all know that sometimes stuff like this happens so I really enjoyed this race hope you guys did as well thank you so very much for watching I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you next time